Okay, this is the beginning of um, the second tape of an interview with uh, Art Sonny Thomas. And as we concluded the first tape, I believe that uh, Mr. Thomas was talking about a dance that was well attended and uh, that was, uh, well, if you okay. can recall, why don't you just take up where? Okay, yeah, we had this, it was a, it was a uh, party uh, after the last football game our junior year. And uh, uh, there was quite a, quite a bit of interracial, well, black guy, white girl thing going on at that party. And uh, that next week in school, uh, as I recall, uh, the school had a special assembly, and they drew out. They didn't call any. They didn't call any names, but they uh, the, the system expressed their displeasure mm. at uh, for that type of a party. Now. There, there probably there probably was some underage drinking going on beer in particular mm -hmm. and, and 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 whatever else but uh, that had been going on every Friday night after every after every game but uh, after the last game of the season when all the heck broke loose and some of these some of this coupling came to came to bear was the first time that it was significant enough to to, to to draw attention and warrant a uh, uh, an admonishment mm -hmm. from the school system mm -hmm. so uh, yeah there was uh, there was some mixing going on but it was pretty much uh, hush hush and under under the table type of thing what wasn't, wasn't, wasn't anything overt now mm -hmm. no, uh -uh. We didn't go that far. Mm -hmm. uh, while you were in high school, did you uh, did you have a job? Uh, no. Uh, dur well, during the during the summers, during the summers, yeah, I worked uh, for a while. I was learning learning how to press clothes at the XL Cleaners, and uh, right next to the big show on Main Street. And this was this was the this was the this was one of the top dry cleaners in town, man. <laughs> They're going to teach me how to press these pants. And it shocked me. They gave me a good pair of pants, you know, <laughs> here, here to, learn. <laughs> to learn on. Man, I had, <laughs> I had creases, <laughs> you know, starting on one side, going down the other. Uh, I thought I was going to mess them up. Said, no, don't worry, you can't mess them up. But I'm not. But uh, some of the stuff that goes on was dry cleaner. <laughs> and then I worked at, uh, for a couple of summers uh, uh, between uh, 10th and 11th and 11th and 12th grade. I worked at the uh, Valdecker Packing Company okay. during the summer. That, that was interesting. And the reason I got that job was, again, the aunt that was head of the laundry at Pickle Memorial when I was born. Mm -hmm. She was head of the laundry at Valdecker Packing Company. Hmm. Uh, when I was coming out of high school, yeah, that was that was that was interesting. And and, and Decker's was one of the big employers uh, of uh, African Americans in in Pickwa at that time. Uh, what did they do? Uh, it was a meatpacking plant or a slaughterhouse or hmm. what have you. And uh, the the more skilled butchers at Brown Beckers were persons of color. Uh, Kenny Thorpe's father, brother, uh, Willie Redmond, his brother-in-law, uh, a gentleman named uh, Mr. Booker, Booker Thompson, the Clemenses. I mean, he, these guys, these guys were good. These guys were being recruited by uh, Swift and Armour down in Cincinnati. In St. Louis, as a matter of fact, that's where the Thorpes came from, the meatpacking industry in St. Louis, and they were hired by Deckers. Mm. Uh, these, these were skills, but 
They couldn't get a job as butchers in a chain grocery store in Pickle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that. I, I, I don't know how, uh, I don't know how the, uh, uh, we made it coming up uh, during those years. I mentioned, I mentioned earlier about the types of jobs that I didn't see people of color in, but now Deckers had a sizable uh, number of uh, black employees. Uh, of course, private family. Uh, and then uh, the picture that I put out there on the website, the Hunter Raglan softball team. Mason Lake Construction. Uh, yeah, yeah, which I guess is the forerunner of Elmer Harrison's firm today. Mm -hmm. uh, and those guys were good. And they worked not only Pitbull, but the entire Miami Valley. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were good. Uh, they were really good. Uh, and some of the I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that there were some blacks that worked a wood shovel and tool that I didn't, I didn't realize. But uh, I know some of the other plants, uh, French oil, Hartzels, uh, Harold Dent fan maybe, Meteor Motor Coach. I don't know that there were any persons of color working for them. Hmm. There might have been some working for the city as city employees like uh, street repair. Mr. Evans worked for the city. And there were a couple others, you know, that did that kind of uh, did that kind of work. But uh, somehow uh, now, when I came I, I know that there were there were blacks working at Carrollton and I know that there were blacks at Hartzell. I worked at Hartzell's myself. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So that would have been in, you know, 71, 70, that, that 72, 73, that, that period. Okay. Um, Miller Meteor, I don't know. Uh, or Felt Blanket, uh, or BVD, Allen A. Underwear. The big plant that used to be Yeah, there. right there on the corner down from uh, Park Avenue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had some in there. Mm -hmm. uh, when I graduated from high school in 52, well, uh, the one friend that I mentioned, Chris Evans. Chris Evans and uh, uh, Bob Ritter and a couple other guys, we went to the uh, French Oil Machinery Employment Office there on Green Street mm -hmm. and to fill out applications for jobs. Uh, I know where you're going. I, I, I when I came to town, I heard these kinds of stories. Go ahead. Yeah, well, the lady gave the lady gave all of those uh, all of my white friends application blanks to fill out, and she told me that we don't we don't need any janitors at this time. <laughs> 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 I mean, now this this is 1952 now, yeah. so I you know 20 years later when you come in the civil rights movement had come and gone. Well, not come, it had come, not yeah. gone, because mm -hmm. it's still going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, things have things have changed in that during <laughs> the course of that 50 years. But but that was the that was the response that we got at those kinds of shops. Yeah. Didn't, uh, need any didn't need any janitor. Didn't need any janitor. Wasn't any and and wasn't any thought given to the possibility that you might be applying for a foreman's yeah, position yeah, or, or, or some kind of training <laughs> on one of these <laughs> machines, you know, just like these guys. <laughs> no, no, you don't need any gym. And when I come to think of it, my friend uh, 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 Sherman Robinson's dad worked at Hartzell's right there on Washington. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was, he was the, the maintenance man, custodian, whatever. Mm -hmm. Hartzell's. Mm -hmm. uh, one of his main jobs, uh, Mr. Clemens, you know, the Clemens on uh, Camp Street, okay. he was uh, uh, at Arrowvent Fan, the, you know, the cut, the, what's the name? Mm -hmm. Of course, he did the private, he did the private family thing, and, and Mrs. Clemens was a caterer too, so they, did, they were successful, fairly mm -hmm. successful. Uh, 
the Goins family, uh, they lived on way out on South Roosevelt Avenue on property uh, that I guess was owned by the woods, of the wood show and pool. And it was kind of like the groundskeeper, the maintenance guy. So uh, uh, it seems like there was someone who was also hooked up with uh, or felt and blanket in that in that same capacity, but these were onesies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, these were these, these were onesies. There were, uh, in numbers, uh, Deckers had had a few. Uh, of course, Hunter Bragdon had all those skilled guys. Uh, rest of them, females, private family, domestic. Uh, Mr. Thomas, Fred's daddy, worked for Shear Bell, a um, uh, Chevrolet dealership. Down in that area where Hardenbrook's thing is, down in that area. Uh, and they won't say he was a mechanic, but now I remember, I, I remember, uh, I remember Mr. Thomas as washing and what we call detailing cars. Okay. Today, I, I, don't, I don't remember up under a hood, and that's not to, you know, to downplay mm -hmm. uh, him. But he was there, and he wanted a few there. Uh, and I said it was. They were in the dry cleaners, in the dry cleaning business. Oh, another big, uh, another big employer of persons of color. And most of them were from the Bassett Avenue area. Was uh, McKinley Produce called mm -hmm. the Chicken House? Okay. On on on, uh, on on Roosevelt Avenue, Roosevelt and Wood mm -hmm. or Water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That corner in there. Right. Uh, Where the Church of Jesus is. That in that area. Uh. They had a they but later they had a plant back there, but their big plant at that time was on the other side of uh, were you and Pickle when they still had the the uh, thing for the train. The train came through Pickle down through well, it came elevated the Pennsylvania Railroad. Well, I you know, I think it was just being taken out. Okay. 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 Well, when, when, on that area just north on Roosevelt, just north of that over overpass where the train was, and McKinley Produce had a big, big, big uh, poultry processing plant there, and they hired uh, they hired a lot of a lot of, lot of colored people. Hmm. Uh, and at that time also, uh, there were s smaller motels, like Allen 25, where, where they had a lot of maid work, and uh, a lot of black women worked as maids in those, uh, in those motels. Interestingly, today you can't, you, traveling is very difficult to find a, a black maid in a hotel today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, there were a couple barber shops, like I said. Somehow, somehow we made it, man. I don't know how. Uh, worked for the county. Mr. Andy worked for the county. There was the county highway department. Mm -hmm. Uh, Probably a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah, he had a pretty good job. He had a pretty, he had a pretty good position. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, you know your your athletic success. I mean, you know, I want to make sure that uh, we have an opportunity to uh, to recognize that you were the first or among the first to you know have a position of leadership of, uh, interesting okay 
the uh, quarterback. Yeah, I mean, well, this is interesting. Uh, Kay Thorpe before me, and Chuck Andy immediately. Kenny and Chuck played a couple of years together, and then uh, Kenny and I played a couple of years together. Then myself, and this was this was the era of the late '40s and very early '50s. Uh, and now I look back, there were, there were quite a few of us that ran track. There were several of us that played football. And there may be a three or four of us to play basketball. Okay, Kenny and Chuck and myself. Uh, as far as I can, as far as I can remember, during that period, we were the only three that were three-year letter winners in each sport: football, track, and/or baseball. Chuck played baseball. Uh, for some reason or another, none of us were ever the captain of any team during our senior year. Whatever, whatever that says, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, and then, like, like. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, and it was just, it probably wasn't that so much ability, it was just a matter of uh, uh, timing. I came along at a time when uh, the quarterback position at Pickwell High School was on a, kind of like on a, on a down swing, if you will, because they had some, they had some great quarterbacks in the, in the mid to late 40s. Mm -hmm. Well, by the time they hit there, they had pretty much all gone. And these were the guys I idolized, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Buckworts, uh, the coach's son, Pete Norman. Uh, I mean, these, these, these were the guys, man. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a quarterback. So hey, I started playing quarterback in junior high school. So by the time I got to high school, it was, it was kind of one of those, uh, it would, it would, would, would uh, de facto be the word. He's going to be the ipso facto or, or whatever, you know. He, he, he's the guy. So I, I ended up as, a, as a, the quarterback my junior and senior year for, uh, for Pickle High School. Probably one of the first blacks at that, at that position in, you know, predominantly white schools during the early 50s. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, more, more timing and ability. Mm -hmm. The more time you know, uh, but the, the, the interestingly about you asked about working during during uh, high school and uh, my close buddies Kenny Thorpe and Chuck Andy, Sharon Robinson, uh, Fred Thomas, Tucson Faustin, uh, Jack Thomas. Those were my the ones that I'm leaving somebody out, but those were my cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, all of us did little, little. We never had a a job job. We had we had little bit of things that we made made some money at while we were in high school. But guys like uh, Hal Rees, uh, Elmer Harris, Jesse Olden, Hunter and Raglan on the Hunter Raglan baseball team, Holden Sawyer, Chuck Musco, uh, Darcy Thorpe, Kenny's older brother. Bill Ralph, I can just go on and on and on. Uh, these guys were our role models, and they were just like uh, the generation right above us. Guys that had probably served in World War II. You know, that generation had come home. Mm -hmm. And they had, most of them had gone to school here in Pickle, and they played on the Athletics for Piqua High School, when there were there was definitely quotas as to how many how many blacks you gonna have uh, at that time. Ability really didn't mean it was just out and out quota, you know, only, only so many gonna make it. But uh, these guys were such uh, strong influences on us and and our and our families 
that the uh, the emphasis that was placed on, on us was uh, make those grades, go to school, make those grades, uh, church, become uh, uh, good solid citizens, uh, play ball. I mean that's that that is your job because mm -hmm. you've got you got. When you get out of high school, you got the rest of your life, you know, to, to hit those licks mm -hmm. like we're doing now. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, and you guys, uh, you, need, you need to enjoy these early years and these high school years. And you can pay us back by being responsible in your actions. That's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. See, that, 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 that's, a, that's a great lesson and a valuable kind of uh, uh, teaching experience on the part of uh, older uh, male uh, models which we sorely miss these days these days yeah you know uh, people stepping up and then you know you didn't these weren't your these weren't your they weren't a father to you no you know, and may not have had an, uh, you know, a, any other kind of relationship, you know, blood relationship, mm -hmm. but they had a sense of purpose in terms of conveying to you the importance of mm -hmm. being the best that you mm -hmm. can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not only athletically, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, academically, oh, uh, spiritually. And let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, church. Okay. Uh, so where, where, where did you go? Where did you go to church at? Grew up in Cyrene AME Church. Um, coming along, uh, the minister that I remember, the preacher that I remember most, was uh, Reverend Brightman. Uh, I always remember uh, uh, Reverend Harris, Elmer's father, Elmer Harris's father. Okay. He was kind of like uh, uh, an associate pastor. He was. I don't know what kind of work Reverend Harris did, <laughs> but he was he was always with Cyrene AME, whoever the, whoever the pastor was. Okay. Uh, Reverend Harris and, was and that and that situation being that uh, the pastor was appointed by the conference. By the conference, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, choir. We were, in, we were in the choir. I couldn't sing a lick. Still can't sing. Uh, bless. Uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Taylor on Madison Avenue, Daryl Taylor's wife, you know, with her. Yeah. Uh, she tried her darndest, man. She and she encouraged me, but Larry, I just, I just can't, I just can't carry a nickel. <laughs> but uh, she tried. Uh, Sunday school was uh, the Sunday school superintendent was a lady named Abby. Was, can I stop you? Was Joe about your age or? Joe, Joe Taylor. He's a little younger than me. A little younger. Yeah, I was coming along with uh, uh, his sister uh, Margaret and Fontel, and Joe was just a little younger than me. Albert was closer to mine. Chevy Wilson Taylor. Okay, well, he was my age. Uh, so we had uh, uh, the church Sunday school. Uh, my Sunday school teacher was uh, Mrs. Harris, Elmer's mother. Uh, the Sunday school superintendent was Abby Davis. Uh, yeah, we were at we were at. Uh, like I said, we came up in Cyrene. Uh, most of my, most, many of my other friends came up in uh, Park Avenue Baptist. Uh, but the church thing didn't. You know, there wasn't, there, wasn't, there wasn't any friction about that. I mean, you know, we go, you got, you go to Park Avenue. I go to Siren. Church is out. We go, we meet at the big show or the little show on Sunday afternoon. Play ball. And, you know, we together through the week on Sunday morning. You go to Park Avenue. I go to Siren. That was, that was, uh, that was it. And then uh, uh, no kind of turf war. In terms no kind of turf war. No kind of well. Uh, they had, they had uh, at that time they had church league softball. Now there would, there would be turf wars, softball games. Okay. Compete. Yeah, 
Park Avenue had better ball players than Cyrene. He used to kill us. <laughs> he used to kill us. <laughs> but we were all right after the game. Uh, in a decent uh, I guess along with the church uh, activities, uh, Boy Scouts was pretty strong. Oh, okay. And uh, Mr. Taylor was uh, Daryl Taylor was a scout master and for and there must have been two troops because Mr. Taylor was the scout master for us at Cyrene and Mr. Mitchell was a scout master seemed like he was the scout master for those guys at Park Avenue. Now maybe they were together uh, I'm, but it's, it's, it seems like there were two two groups. Uh, we'd get our we'd get our one week at Camp Wakanda, the YMCA camp up around Houston, Houston, up in that area. Uh, now this is the Boy Scout. As a result, I'm not sure if that was a result of the Boy Scouts, the church, or what. Uh, now, because we couldn't belong to the to the YMCA. Okay. I think I've heard this story about uh, the uh, Clayton Fields, is it? It's probably the first. Yeah. yeah. And, and we in high school we had a group uh, segregated. So what, what year would that have been? 49, 50, 51, 52. Uh, came out in 52. In, in the yearbook we had a uh, we had a group the last years that I spent in school, the high Y, I don't know if they had that when you were coming on, it was like a boys club, mm -hmm. the high Y became integrated, I think the last year or so that I was in school. But prior to that, there was a, there was a, uh, a Y group for the black boys and then of course a high Y group for the white boys. And it seems like they had more access to, and I'm not sure whether it was integrated or not, but uh, but the girls it seemed like they always had some kind of relationship with the YWCA. Because we used to, that's what, that was one of the places where the colored kids had their dances. At the W. At the YWCA. Yeah. 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 But those, those, those guys that I, that I mentioned, and routes and the, and the Thorpes. Uh, come, come game time, uh, football season, basketball season, uh, track season in the spring. You know, these guys are bricklayers. But uh, we have a big track meet and then the league meets at night. Hey man, uh, through uh, Mr. Raglan, with Mr. Raglan's permission, Fridays, they kept they cut work early, and they traveled with the team. You know, out of town games. They were always there at the home games, and you know they're not that big of an interest in track. But hey, we have a stadium full of those guys, man. Hmm. And they were something. They were really something. How'd you travel? You know, around. Did you, did you have a car while you were in high school? Uh, I didn't have a car. Uh, uh, we had a couple guys that had uh, old junk heaps, and we used to, Fred Thomas, uh, Tucson Falls, and he had a car there for a while. Uh, and we, yeah, we got around to uh, Troy and Sydney, and we'd venture out. We'd really be doing it when we'd go to Springfield and Lima. We'd make it to Lima regularly. When it was, uh, those uh, may pop tires. <laughs> yes, yeah, we would change three or four tires between <laughs> you pick one and one. And we, we ran into one, one incident. Now these things stick out. Uh, Crytersville mm -hmm. on 25. Mm -hmm. And we were on our way to line up to Bradfield Center to play basketball. And you had to go through 25A, had to run, you know, right through through all of these little small towns. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, went right through them. 
So we know we're going through Craddisville. And uh, I don't know, we're, we're on our way up, we're on our way back. But anyway, we decided for some reason or another, we're going to stop at this restaurant in Crydersville and get something to eat. And uh, we stopped and my guy, Sherman Robbins, and Toussaint McKinney and whoever else is with us, we walk in and get ready to place our order. And the lady says, uh, okay, we'll serve you. We'll serve you boys, but you'll have to eat it in the kitchen. And we can't serve you out here. You'll we'll have to eat it in the kitchen. This is, again, knowing your place. My man Sherman says, now, nah, I don't know anybody in your kitchen. We eating out here. <laughs> Words no sooner had gotten out of his mouth than the uh, police department showed. I don't know whether it was the sheriff or whatever. And you want to know what 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 kind of what kind of disturbance or problem are you are you having in here? And the lady the lady explained, uh, well, this stuff, these fellas here having problems understanding that if they want to be served, they have to eat in the kitchen. And they're balking at it. So he kind of told us, well, he, she's telling you right, fellas, you know, you can, uh, you know, I heard it, sir, you, you can eat food here, you can, you, can, you can go in the kitchen, you can eat it there quietly and go on your way, or you can continue to uh, create a disturbance. She'll fix your food. We'll take you down to, I don't know if they had a jail or what. <laughs> you can eat your food down there. Yeah, jail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, either, either way, you're not going to eat out here in the lobby. Mm -hmm. but, but those are the, those are some of those, that, that's a remembrance of knowing your, knowing your place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or being put in your place, yeah. whatever, whatever that is. That hard. I can remember we, uh, would occasionally go to uh, Lebanon. That's where Linda lived at. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't even talking to her at that time, I don't think. But anyhow, going to Lebanon uh, necessitated going through South Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And uh, South Lebanon and Oregonia and that, that area was notorious in terms of, you know, not for blacks, mm -hmm. not to, you know, see now you, you were daring in, in terms of stopping and, and uh, determining that you wanted to be served at, at a restaurant. Uh, but we knew mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we better not have our car break down mm -hmm. or we better not uh, let the, the, the dark of day set upon us mm -hmm. and be caught in mm -hmm. South Lebanon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that would never do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would never do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's it's funny, that, you know, when you mentioned that, that brought back memory. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, and that was like, you know, that was the late 60s. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, you know, you mentioned do we have cars and where do we go? And we made, like I said, we made Detroit and the Sydney, which is close, the Urbana, the Bell Fountain, uh, the Lima. Uh, we didn't, for some reason or another, we didn't make that jaunt to Dayton. Hmm. And I think we didn't go to Dayton because we ran into what you were talking about with South Lebanon and Oregonia. We had to go through Tip City and Vandalia. Mm. And in the 40s and 50s, you didn't want to be going through <laughs> Tip City <laughs> and Vandalia. <laughs> Not a bunch of fellas, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I think that's the reason why we didn't, uh, uh, we, we didn't we didn't make it down to Dayton as a group. We'd make it to Dayton on ball teams. Mm -hmm. But just, we're going to Dayton? No. <laughs> now, on on uh, days when you would have games, let's let's see, uh, you would have played in the uh, Miami Valley. Miami Valley. Uh, I think you may have been. Was, was Portsmouth in the league at that time? Uh, was, was there no? The Portsmouth was, was in the 
Greater Ohio League with uh, Springfield and Mansfield and Lima and those teams. So how far afoot did you go in terms of playing in the Miami Valley League at that time? It's, what it, were the schools? That it's pretty much uh, like Belt the, Mountain. Mm -hmm. Pretty much like the the, the GWOL now. The uh, <clears throat> the northern block. Yeah, the northern teams were Pickles, Sydney, Troy, and Greenville. And the southern teams were uh, uh, Xenia, Miamisburg. Miamisburg. Uh, at that time, there was just one school, Fairmont. And was Fairborn in there? No, well, there, was, there was no Fairborn in there. Is that right? There was Fairfield and Osborne. Hmm. Fairborn what, didn't even exist then, I would believe. Uh, in Oakwood, in the south. Now, we kind of held in Xenia, the black players. We kind of held at uh, Xenia. That's, that's strange. Why Xenia? Because yeah, Miami. we know that Xenia was also a, a community that was even, uh, had, a, had an even higher percentage yeah. of, of uh, blacks yeah. uh, than what people would have. Okay. At that time, the schools were segregated in Xenia. Oh, that's Black, right. Blacks went East. to Xenia East. Yeah, I forgot about that. And uh, the rest went to uh, Xenia Central. Now, there may have been, when I say Blacks, there may have been an occasional Black going to Xenia Central. Okay. But for all intents and purposes, uh, Xenia East was uh, where the blacks were. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, now I've heard uh, blacks, in, even in Xenia, with that size of the uh, population, uh, they didn't venture much beyond Detroit Street or Detroit Avenue. That's the main street that runs north and south, where the courthouse is. Mm -hmm. They didn't go on the other side <laughs> towards Dayton, which would mm -hmm. be west. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't venture m much west of Detroit Street. They were uh, Main Street, back east, uh, up on Market, and all those other little streets going back out towards uh, towards Wilberforce. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we caught hell in Xenia. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Miamisburg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard stories about the Yeah, well, yeah. Particularly when I think Holman was that year, earlier than it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Lionsburg was tough. 